Welcome back, everybody. This is the Johnny Manor, and I am continuing with my walkthrough of Final Fantasy I, Dawn of Souls. So off camera, I did a lot of leveling. Got a bunch of Jill and increased my levels a little bit. You can see my characters are currently at level 13. That is important for a couple of different reasons. One, I got a couple of strong level ups for my Red Mage, finally. So his HP is now more in line with everyone else. And I got the money necessary to buy some new spells. So I have Fira, Thundera, and Kira for my Red Mage. Definitely some good magic for the next area. And I also got Dyra, Null Blaze, and Heal. And being at level 13, we can now access level 4 magic. So I actually bought Poisona as well. And I got a few extra antidotes and some tents just for healing purposes because the upcoming dungeon is a doozy especially in the NES version. So, first up, what we're going to have to do is move up to the Northwest Castle. Now, we heard a little bit about that at the Elven Castle. So that is our first location, and once we finish up with that, we will head to the Marsh Cave. So let's make the slow trek over to that castle and see what happens to be there. And of course, any new encounters that we happen upon, I will show off in this episode. Now, I fought a lot of these guys while I was grinding. There's a lot of ogres, a lot of werewolves, and uh, some cobras as well. And an occasional spider or two. Now, you may notice that some of the undead in this game have, instead of the seizure effect, which reduces HP in some of the other Final Fantasies, like Final Fantasy VI comes to mind, they actually regain health, which is a little weird. Here's a new enemy type, the Gigas Worm. And those nasty ogres. Lots of Jill that these guys give, so if you can get two of them, or a mage ogre, which is called an ogre captain or leader or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it's called. But uh, that is a good enemy to fight as well. I think it actually is called an ogre chief. But you should be able to get to the northwest castle just by heading up here. And continue to fight, of course. Many, many random encounters. It's called the Western Keep. Key Key. And... Oh, who is this? The King, tricked by Astos. And now the castle has fallen into ruin. He wants us to get his crown for him from the Marsh Cave. Uh, I guess it's kind of out of our way. Would you happen to know where Astos is? That's really what we need. Maybe if we bring him the crown, he'll let us know where Astos is. But the Marsh Cave is directly south. You're going to have to head south and to the west a little bit to get around some mountain ranges. And this is the first kind of major dungeon in the game. It's only three floors, but the enemies are pretty tough, so you want to be around level 13 to 15. 10-ish to 12-ish in the original. Oh, ghasts. I hate these guys. They can paralyze your party members. You're a real pain. There's going to be all sorts of new enemies in the Marsh Cave, so expect a lot of random encounters. I'll try to get through them as quickly as possible, but I do want to show off new enemy types just to uh, give you all the complete experience of this game. I think it's south here. Yes, there it is. Kind of reminiscent of Chrono Trigger. Alright, I saved, and now we're gonna head in. So we're gonna start by going north. There are two paths you can take, and uh, the north path here is actually a dead end. Now what's interesting about the Marsh Cave, in addition to the really hard enemies, like these green slimes, well these guys have a really high evasion and physical defense. Think uh, Flans from later games. But they are weak to fire damage. I think they're also weak to ice. So we'll show off our Fira spell. You can see kind of what that looks like. 
Okay, we're gonna see somewhat of a unique aspect. I, I think... I'm not sure if any later Final Fantasies use this. I mean, some of them come to mind. And cool, we gotta level up. Uh, Final Fantasy XII comes to mind. But um, this game introduced... New enemy here, the Shadow. They're not too tough. They like to blind you. But other than that, they go down pretty quick. But, essentially, some of the chests in the dungeons of this game have one item in, and if you take the item from it, then basically what happens, and this dagger is useless, there are similar chests in the same dungeon that hold that same item, so if you take it from one... Ooh, and scorpions. <laughs> These guys are nasty. They do a lot of damage and they can poison you. One of the worst enemies in this area. So you want to be very careful with them, especially in large groups. But as I was saying, if you take the item from one chest, then any of the other chests that would have had that item are now empty. So you will not be able to get it from other chests. So you kind of have to be strategic in a way about which chest you take it from. So what I'm going to do during this playthrough is try to show you the most efficient ways to get everything in the game. And uh, I did my healing off screen there. I don't think you wanted to see it since I had to do a lot of it. So in here we have a broadsword and also some gel. And uh, that broadsword is an example of one of the change chests. So the other chests that would have had it no longer have it. So they will be empty. Now there's another chest up to the northwest, but it is not worth getting because again, it's a change chest. And so we can get it another place that's a little bit easier to get to. So now instead of heading north, we're gonna head back towards the entrance and we're gonna head south this time and explore the second level a little bit more. And I am getting really lucky here to not get any random encounters. That's crazy. Alright, so we want to head west. There are a couple of chests over here. In fact, there's really only one. Here's an example of the broadsword, which I already got. And can I sneak by down here? No. Okay. We'll have to head to the north here. Alright, and this is a chest containing some gel. And that is about it for the second floor. So what I'm going to do is head out, use a tent, and then we'll come back in and we'll do the last floor of the Marsh Cave. So I'll be back in a bit. Alright, so I have healed, I have saved, and now we are going to head down to the final area of the Marsh Cave. But first we're going to take on some Cargoyles that just hammered Avok. Sorry buddy. Yeah. Avak is obviously the weakest in my party in terms of defense. <laughs> Stop hitting him! Yeah, we're gonna have to heal. So let's use some cure spells. Alright, so the stairs to get down to the third floor are over here to the east. We just gotta head through this door here, head down, and there are the stairs. Now, the third level is massive, and I'm going to head right for the crown, because we have to take on a boss to get it. And so I don't want to dink around fighting other enemies, so let's heal. And when you step on this spot in front of the chest, we automatically get brought into a boss encounter with some Piscasso Demons, or Pisco Demons, however you want to pronounce it. And uh, basically these guys, they used to be called wizards in the original, they used physical attacks. Now they don't confuse like in some of the later Final Fantasies, but they are incredibly strong. You can fight from anywhere from two to four of them. I think sometimes one of them actually. And this little plate that we stepped on is actually... <laughs> that did a lot of damage. And they're dead, because we got lucky and only fought two. But you can keep going on that plate over and over and refighting them as many times as you want. But now we got the crown. 
Okay, I healed, and now we're gonna explore the rest of this area. A couple more chests to pick up, and we have a new enemy, the Grey Ooze. Just nail this one with physical attacks. Now to the south of this area where the crown was, there are some Mystic Key areas for us to open, but uh, obviously we don't have the Mystic Key yet. Very soon though, viewers. So we'll have to come back once we do. So we got a phoenix down, that's nice. We have to head all the way to the north. There's a room in the northwest, or northeast corner actually. It has some gel in it. Nice. And just a few more chests to grab and then we can get out of the marsh cave. So we'll head to the west here. And we'll fight some spiders, the tarantula and the black widow. Not too tough, they're not very strong. The main kind of danger with these enemies is that they can poison. So my poisonous spell is coming into uh, effect here, helping me out a bit. We got a cottage used to be called a home, and the last chest is a copper armlet, which is why we did not buy one in Elfheim. Since only one of our party members can equip it, for the most part, that it's helpful for, and as you can see, increases defense by a little bit. Alright, so that is it for the Marsh Cave. So we're going to head out now, and what I'm going to do is use all of this Jill I've been amassing from these numerous random encounters. I'm going to stock up on some supplies and heal in Elfheim. Ah, okay. Got some more new enemies here. Use our fire spell. And if there's anything left over, we'll use our holy spell. Ooh. Did a lot of damage, actually. Well, it didn't do damage with a paralyzed. Not too tough. Alright, so let me show you the way out of the Marsh Cave. A little bit of backtracking, then I will return to Elfheim and uh, heal, buy some new stuff, and then ultimately I'm going to cut and I'm going to meet you guys at the Western Keep or Northwest Castle, and we will return the crown to the king. We'll see you in a bit. Here we are at the Western Keep. Let's see what reward we get for returning this crown to the king. Um, why is he laughing at us? Trap. Oh. Shocking, it's Astos. I am completely fooled. Guess he needed the uh, crown and the crystal eye to increase his power. Now he wants to become the true Elf King. Not exactly what he's doing there, he's kind of walking in his chair. I don't know if he has uh, ADHD or something. Now, Estos is interesting. He has one kind of majorly damaging attack, and that is death. Uh, it was called Rub, for whatever reason in the original, and luckily it missed. Because we do have one Phoenix down, he doesn't use it much, as long as you can avoid it the first time. We should be okay. But it can hit pretty frequently, so it can be tough to avoid it. I'm gonna haste all of my fighters and attack. He's supposedly susceptible to silence. Um, I've never had it hit. I'll try and see if it works. But as long as you can avoid that death spell, you should be okay. Now he likes to use slow spells too. Not too bothersome. We'll just keep pasting our characters and attacking him. He has around 400-ish mm, HP, so he should go down pretty quickly. And I realize I didn't mention the uh, Pisco Demons actually have around 80 HP. And Astos always reminded me of the Dark Elf from Final Fantasy IV, and that's mainly as he's dead already. Mainly because I always played Final Fantasy IV first. I played that game before I played this one. But nice, we get some increases in level here. He was not too tough. And that should give us the Crystal Eye. Which 
which means we can return to uh, Matoya, give her that, and we'll finish up our fetch quest, which will ultimately lead to the Mystic Key and a lot of backtracking. But we'll do that in my next episode. So as always, viewers, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time. So long.